In this video, I'm going to teach you one of the first things that I ever published. My name is Doug Kahn, and we're starting right now. Alright, today we're talking about an original, versatile, easy to use utility concept. I call it suitcase. Let's take a look at what it can do. Okay, we're going to do a couple tricks, a couple routines, uh, both of which require a live spectator. Since you're there and I'm here, I'll be playing the schizophrenic role of spectator slash magician. A role that's not far-fetched for me. Alright, spectator shuffle deck is cut into several packets. Optional handling, but that's, that's one of them. There. Set ball. Spectator then takes the box, they do this, they pick up the box and place it on the packet that attracts them the most. These are gathered in any order, and then the card that the, the spectator chose is placed inside the box. Kind of a prediction card, or a card of mystery. By the way, when I talk like that, it's dramatic emphasis. Uh, oohs and ahs are appropriate. Thank you. Okay, so we're almost done from here. All you need to do is force a card. That's up to you. Again, you're here and I'm near there. I'm here, so maybe this. Just say stop. Oh, stop. And we'll just use that one. Take a look at it. Uh, of course, my prediction can't match this card exactly because each card in this deck is different. So maybe we'll do this. We'll take half the card. Half of the card. Like if you had a four, you'd make it a two. Face cards would be ten, five. Eights would be four. So just take the card you've picked, divide it in half, and we'll match the nine of, uh, hmm. So yeah, that would be the uh, four and a half of hearts. The four and a half of hearts. Hoo-ha! I should be mentioning here that since the effects in question are psychic related, there is a 99 cents per minute surcharge on all viewing. Okay, as before, this trick starts with a spectator shuffle deck that is subsequently cut into several piles. These are up to the spectator. The box is offered and they instructed to place the box on any pile they so choose. This pile, this card, then becomes the prediction card, a card of mystery, or any other hoo-ha that you would choose to make it seem to be. Now we're going to delve a little deeper into the psyche, and to do that I'll need a couple bits of information. The first one being your middle name. Uh, mine is William, so we'll just use W-I-L-L-I-A-M. That's uh, William, and Mr. Blah Blah William, if you just say stop as I shuffle through the pack. Right there. Stop exactly where the spectator stops you. And then we do a reading of the cards that are revealed. The first one being an Ace of Hearts, that's the card of love. Uh, it's a red card. It doesn't mean you picked a heart, but it means you picked a red card, a heart of love. Uh, oh, uh, diamonds. This, this indicates that you love diamonds. Hmm. Très bien, c'est bon. So red diamond, the uh, ten. The red ten of diamonds. Maybe that means something. Maybe not. Maybe it's all a trick. Maybe it is worth 99 cents a minute. Maybe not. All right, before we talk method, let's discuss a little history. This thing was published in the early 90s by John Rockabomber. He put it in his Modus Operandi Magic Zine, issue number five. And uh, a few years later, expertly described by Paul Cummings in The Tricks of My Trade, The Magic of Doug Kahn, with me. And you'll find it on page 153, described within the pieces routine. If you're interested in tricks of the trade or modus operandi, take a look in the description below. I have links to uh, that stuff and some more stuff and stuff. All right, so let me show you how to make your own suitcase, and then we'll discuss a few ways to use it. Okay, so what we're talking about here is a gaffed card case, or more specifically, it's the cellophane wrapped around the card that has been gaffed. Check this out, right here. There's a trap door that runs along that diagonal line. Uh, and using that trap door, 
We will hide cards from a spectator and sneak them into a spectator shuffled pack. In fact, the spectator will do most of the dirty work for you. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Let's, uh, first, let's go over the construction. It's very simple. All you'll need is something sharp to cut the cellophane and maybe an extra card so that you don't cut the box. Uh, I recommend drawing a guideline. Uh, this was described a little differently in the book in the zine. I, I recommend a 45 diagonal cut. I, I found that works well. So let me get a cellophane that has not been opened. And take note that one of the hardest parts of this task will be getting the cellophane removed from your U.S. Playing Card Company box and keeping it intact for the construction of the gaff. So, mission accomplished there. Take your guide card and load it between the cellophane and the box. And then take your sharp instrument and cut along that diagonal line. Remember, paper is white, fingers are pink. And that's it. Your suitcase is ready for travel. Right, with your gaff properly constructed, you're ready to preset a stock of cards that will be loaded secretly onto a spectator shuffle deck. I'm going to describe the two effects you saw earlier, and in both routines, the suitcase was used to secretly, secretly load the stack onto the deck while simultaneously forcing one of the cards. Pretty sneaky, huh? Uh, the first effect was a variant on the classic Myco routine, which is usually done with a three and a half of clubs. In this routine, I used the nine of hearts and the four of hearts, which I got from uh, Eric Ross's weapons gaff deck. This is a wonderful gaff pack with loads of utility. I'll leave a, dis a link in the description below. But uh, these two cards were stacked uh, set in the suitcase, the four of hearts above the nine. The deck is removed and offered for shuffling, and the flap is not closed. The flap is not tucked in. The flap is left overlapping the face of the uh, card, like this. It's left like that, okay? All right, so just set that aside for now. You could do this later, and it might be better to use this later on as opposed to right away out of sight, out of mind. But for uh, description purposes, let's assume we've reclaimed our spectator shuffle deck. And in the performance, I mentioned cutting the pack into parcels. This is ideal and it works great. But I would like to mention you can also have the spectator take the box and as you dribble the cards from hand to hand, they can pick up the box and stop you and drop the box. And that's a handling that works as well. What's happening here, as the spectators go to grip the box, because the cellophane is on the bottom here, they can't feel that, and because the card flap is over the top of the edges, they can't feel that. So they have no tactile way of telling that there's anything hidden under that card box. And that works wonderfully when the cards are cut into piles. Uh, also, if you offer the box in between two piles, this is a great indicator that the spectator needs to pick it up by the ends. While it will work if they pick it up by the sides, the ends is preferred. So placing the, the box in between two packets makes it a little more cumbersome for them to pick it up by the sides, and the end is a natural way to go. So now you're going to unload those two secret cards. To do this, it's really simple. You just open the flap. You'll see the half moon side uh, allows one of the cards to peek out. If you just squeeze there and pull the box away, the cards are now unloaded from the suitcase. It allows you to take the top card off. So now we force this card, that's the four and a half of hearts, and now our nine of hearts is set atop the pack to force as you see fit. I, I believe the force I used in performance here was a John Bannon handling of the uh, kick cut force. This was a Bobby Bernard false cut that Bannon worked into some really interesting things. Uh, I just did that off the top of my head. You could do a cross cut force. That works fine. Any force of a card where the card begins on the top of the deck is fine. 
So you first you forced your card, you got the big BAMO prediction in the box, build up your suspense, let them think you've messed up. There's no possibly way you could have predicted that card and voila, c'est ça, et c'est bon. Okay, in the second effect, the spectator found three cards that indicated the card they originally predicted. Uh, it's a four of a card, four card stack. You'll need one card that indicates the color, one card that indicates the value, and one card that indicates the suit. And then that card, red, ten of diamonds, is the force card. They're stacked thusly. And they go into the suitcase section of our card box. Secretly hidden, ready for use as you see fit. Deck is shuffled, cut into packets as before. Spectators offered the box and to place it on top of any packet they choose. We lift the flap, we pinch the half moon, move the box away, and load the force card into the box. The other three mates are atop the pack now. Leave them there and then shift the top two to the bottom. You can just do a pass or you can use a double undercut or you can just move them there. Uh, if you do a pass it's nice because it's no visible movement of the deck. Uh, I used a double undercut in performance and I just used a pass right there. So now on top of the deck we have the color mate. On the bottom is the value mate and the suit mate. Begin dealing from the top. Options here, favorite number, middle name, you just deal until they say stop. It really doesn't matter because the first card that you deal will be the color mate. Uh, there are options here as well. For example, if you're a good bottom dealer on the second card, you could start bottom dealing the, the value or the mate, the suit mate. But I use an overhand milk shuffle. A milk shuffle is uh, pulling the top and bottom cards away from the deck, fingers on the back, thumb on the top pulls away the top and bottom as you shuffle off and they tell you where to stop shuffling and that conveniently places the numerical card here and the suit card here. All that's left is the build up and the revelation. Pick the red card, the card of love, you love diamonds, probably means you love the ten of diamonds. Let's check the box. Winner winner, chicken dinner. So as you probably guessed by the last routine, uh, hiding several cards leaves you in position to produce four of a kind quite wonderfully. So again, packet is chosen, our card is predicted, and we'll now use the remainder of the shuffle deck, and I'll try to match the card in the box. Many have tried, and several have died in this process. Let's see. That's a 10. That's a pretty good. Here's the first one's easy. The subsequent cards get a little more challenging. Okay, that's two of a kind. That's not bad. We're going for three. Let's see. Two. And uh, three in a row. So if I got this right, that should mean the card in the box is the. Well, I, I didn't say what four of a kind. I just said producing four of a kind. So, happy dandy. Hoo ha. All right, I, I literally just made up this handling as I was as I was doing it. I had no idea what I was doing before. I just thought it'd be a fun way to produce four of a kind using a an old magician versus gambler routine. So I actually had seven cards loaded in the stack: ten and a king, ten and a king, ten and a king, and the king on top. And uh, those were all snugly inside the gaff. It's kind of a thick packet, but you can still get away with it. Uh, use a, a Mike Skinner strategy that I read in his classic sampler book where you hand out packets of cards to shuffle. So no one person can tell that the deck is missing a large number of cards. Of course, everything Mike Skinner touched was gold. Same as before, card case goes on top. We place the forced card into the box, leaving the stock on top. All you need to do now is some cuts, some double lifts, some double undercuts, and you're ready to start. First double lift will show a 10. You need to get rid of the top card. I did a slip cut there. Second double lift shows another 10. 
get rid of the top card, third double lift, 10. With a little more time, I would have produced a more elegant physical strategy there. I hope the effect resonates and is enough to convey my concept. Let's have a few words and wrap up. I hope you enjoyed the suitcase concept and that this video has inspired you to create some things of your own. If so, please share those creative thoughts in the comments section below. If you have any questions, just below, comments, you know where to put them. And uh, I hope you learned something on the video or saw something that you liked. If you did, please hit that like button, maybe subscribe. And uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.